Hi, good day. I am Dr. Wilfredo S. Tagle, urologist. Welcome to Medical Pearls. Since November 19 is World Toilet Day, so we have decided to make a topic on our program about toilet and urination. We have decided the Lu and P. The term Lu was first used in 1922. It was based on the French term Ludisans, meaning place of ease or lavatory. It was picked up by the British servicemen in France during World War I. That's why when they are pertaining to lavatory or the CR, which we commonly say, it is termed as Lou. In French, is Lodisans. P, it was originated from the 18th century Europe. It is a short term for the word P, which is an initial or the first letter of the word peace. It is one of the least offensive terms for urination. Sulu means lavatory and P means urination. That's why our program for today is titled Lu and P. The earliest recorded history of the Lu is the one from the Western Han Dynasty, which is 202 BC up to 9 AD. They have found out when they have excavated the tomb of the king of, the, of Han Dynasty, they found out a structure which has two step board, then a hand board, and sandalan or backrest. They found out that it is a lavatory. So that is the earliest record of a lavatory which is found in China during 202 BC at Han, Han Dynasty. From Europe, we'll go to Japan. In Japan, they have a Japanese chamber pot. It was excavated from the Edo period, which is 1600 to 1867. It is made of wood. It is used by the Japanese nobility. For example, the Tokugawa Shogunate. This is used by the Shogun because this is portable. While the Shogun climbs into the hole on top of the box, one servant usually blow to circulate fresh air para hindi siya mga moy. Then after using it, after uh, peeing or defecating, one servant will wipe the private parts of their master, the shogun. Servant later on will clean the box after it is being used by the master. So that's how they do in Japan. Later on, at the medieval period, 1509 to 1547, during the time of King Henry VIII, they have also developed a wooden portable toilet. It is assigned to a servant, also to a servant, which is called the groom of the stool. And this is the most sought after position because usually they are, they become close to the king. Since they can see the private parts of the king, they usually can hear private moments and sometimes the king would ask the opinion of the groom of the stool. They became consultants or friend of the king, even some of the groom of the stool 
when they grow up, they become knights. And sometimes, they can marry princess or the children of King Henry VIII. On the other side of Europe, from the ancient Greek on 6th century BC, they have a chamber pot. Okay. Usually, it is made out of metal or ceramic. Since they are at that time the center of art and culture, so it is a very beautiful pot developed as a personal toilet. Even if the princess is wearing a lot of garments and undergarments, it was developed so the princess could easily urinate. Now, going to our place in the Philippines, we have the same portable toilet. It is called Arenola. It is typically found in the home of our ancestors in their bedrooms. Siguro, some of us nakaranas nito or inabutan nila. Traditionally, the restrooms were separate from Filipino homes. Nasa labas siya. But, at night, they bring the portable toilet, which is the Arinola, to their bedside. So, they will not go out of their home just to pee or defecate. This is commonly made up of a light metal painted white with a handle on the side. Okay? So, before, in the morning or during the night, they will just throw away the content of the arenola, which is the urine. And sometimes, uso pa ang harana, pag hindi nila gusto yung nangakarana sa anak nila, or masama ang tono at sintonado yung nangakarana, this is what they get. Natatapunan sila ng ihi from Arinola. Fast forward to our times, we have a new faces of the loo. In other countries, they are fond of the loo. So, there's a restaurant who used toilets and urinals as their eating place, their washing area, and their bowls where they serve their food. In the Philippines, still, there are areas which the bathroom or the restroom are located outside. They have a wooden structure outside their home. It's usually drained by the river underneath and usually it is combined with tabo and a pail of water to clean themselves. In the provinces, they usually term this as pit bong because you can hear the closing when the stool passes your anus, you can hear the closure which is pit then after two to three seconds, it will drop to the water, which you can hear, boom. That's why it is called pit boom. There are also new CRs in our urban areas. They are beautifully designed. Usually, you can see this in the fast foods. But you can tell the restroom or the CR that it is in the Philippines because there's a tabo, which is commonly found or practiced by Filipinos. Hindi natin maalis yung tabo sa ating CR. Filipino culture, meron tayong tabo sa CR. In other places, there are also lavatories or CR that are fascinated with art and the nude uh, individuals. The door for the CR is with a male organ and the doorknob is done by holding the penis of the male. The male CR, there's a picture of the female, a nude body of a female. Other areas, 
There are also other phases of Lu, which they placed some entertaining materials. And sometimes the urinal itself is a product of an art. I saw one CR, which is from a shark. I think you will have fear urinating on such kind of urinal. After discussing the loo, the pee, we will go back to the basics. How does the urinary tract work? So for males, we have the bladder, long urethra, which is divided into three, the prostatic urethra, the bulbous urethra, and the penile urethra, which is usually around 6 to 8 centimeters in length. The reproductive organs of the male, which is the testes, the vas deferens, and a secondary sexual organ, which is the prostate. On the female, we have the bladder and a very short urethra. That's why the female, during their reproductive age, usually develop urinary tract infection because of the short urethra. After the urine is formed from the kidneys, it will go to the urinary bladder where it is stored. It will wait until the, it becomes full normally at 300 to 500 cc. There are three phases of urination. The first phase is that you will feel that you like to void or to urinate, but you can hold your feeling of urination and later on you can forget about it. The second phase of urination is that you can feel that you want to urinate, you will not forget about it anymore, but you can hold your urge to urinate. Then the third phase is that you can feel that you want to urinate. There is the urge. You will not forget about it anymore. And you cannot hold it anymore. So that is the last phase wherein you really have to go run to the loo so you can pee. And during the process, the urinary bladder will contract. The prostatic urethra will open or the sphincters of the urethra will open and the urine will flow going out. Once the bladder is empty, the bladder will relax and the prostatic urethra or the sphincter will close. So that's the process of urination. Now we will go with the problems of urination. We call it the lower urinary tract symptoms. We have divided into two, the storage problem and the voiding problem. For the storage problem, we have the frequency, the urgency, the nocturia, and the urge incontinence. Frequency, ibig sabihin, mayat maya umiihi ka, more than the normal. The urgency is that mapapatakbo ka papunta sa CR. That's urgency. Nocturia, ibig sabihin, ihi ka ng ihi during the night. Pag ikaw ay natutulog, gigisingin ka para umihi. Normally, it is less than three times a night. Pero kung umiihi ka three or more times per night habang natutulog, that is abnormal urination at night or nocturia. And lastly, the urge incontinence, that means pag naiihi ka, bigla siyang magkakaroon ng urinary leak. May lalabas at may lalabas na ihi. Hindi mo mapipigilan. For voiding symptoms, ito yung problema na hindi mo mailabas lahat ang ihi mo galing sa pantog. You have the weak stream, the intermittency, the slow stream, and emptying that is not complete or incomplete emptying. The weak stream 
ito usually nararamdaman ng mga matatandang lalaki. When there are signs of obstruction. Instead na katulad ng kabataan, malakas ang kalsik ng ihi. Habang nagkakaedad, kakaroon ng weak stream, humihina na, hindi na mataas ang talsik, mahina na ang flow ng kanilang ihi. Intermittency, ibig sabihin pag sila umiihi, paputol-putol na. Biglang matat, mapuputol, tapos maya-maya, andyan pa ulit. Hindi pa sila nagsisipir, maiihi na naman sila. That's intermittently. Slow stream, ito yung talagang mahina na, maliit na ang daloy ng ihi. And lastly, feeling of incomplete urination, yun yung pagkatapos mong umihi, pakiramdam mo meron pang natitira sa loob. Kaya mapapansin nyo, ang lalaki na may edad na ay matagal umihi sa CR. Yun yung mga may prostate problem. Kahit tapos na silang umihi, hindi pa sila satisfied kasi there is a feeling of incomplete urination. Kadalasan naman sa babae, pag may lower urinary tract symptoms, ihi naman sila ng ihi, maya't maya umiihi. Pwedeng magkakaroon na ng inflammation, in infection, mahapdi na yung pag-ihi. Pero maya't maya umiihi sila. What are the causes of lower urinary tract symptoms? Marami. Pwedeng benign prostatic hyperplasia, pwedeng infection, pwedeng urethral strictures, Pwedeng marami ang may bato sa daanan ng ihi. Pwedeng namamaga ang daanan ng ihi. Kaya pinakamaganda ho, lapit kayo sa isang doktor. Kahit na sinong doktor, kaya hong alamin kung anong dahilan at mabibigyan kayo ng karampatang gamot para dito. Huwag niyo hong iisipin na pag ihi kayo ng ihi o may problema sa daanan ng ihi ay kasama sa edad. Usually, oh, hindi dapat ganon. So, ano ang ang remedyo? Pag meron kayong lower urinary tract symptoms o may problema sa pag-ihi. Ang unang-una, behavioral modification. Watchful waiting. Pag hindi pa naman malala. Pwedeng reduction of fluids sa gabi, lalo na. Kung pwede, wag na kayong iinom bago matulog. Kasi mapupuno kaagad ang pantog nyo iihi kayo ng iihi, gigising kayo sa gabi. Number two, avoid coffee and alcohol at night. Huwag ka nang masyadong iinom ng kape, tsaa, and alcoholic beverages, lalo na ang beer sa gabi. Kasi iihi at iihi kayo. Number three, do double voiding or relax voiding. Pag kayo ay nag, may nararamdaman ng lower urinary tract symptoms, huwag kayong nagmamadali. Relax lang kayo. Pagkatapos nyong umihi, pause for a while, itry nyong umihi ulit. Yun ang tinatawag na double voiding. Sa pag-relax naman, pwede rin hipuhipuin nyo muna yung iyong puson or sisipul-sipul kayo habang umihi para kayo ay nare-relax. That is relax voiding. Isa pang technique is the distraction technique. Ito yung pag umiihi kayo, bubuksan nyo ang gripo sa tubig para may tumutulong tubig. Yun yung mga distraction techniques. Bladder retraining. I-train nyo yung sarili nyo. Bago kayo umalis ng bahay, umihi kayo. Pagkadating sa pupuntahan nyo, umihi kayo. Kasi minsan, Matrapik. Hindi nyo alam gaano katagal ang biyahe nyo simula bahay papuntang trabaho. Bago umalis ng opisina, umihi kayo. Pagkarating sa bahay, umihi ulit kayo. Or, gawin yung habit, every 2 to 3 hours, umihi kayo kahit hindi pa kayo umi naiihi. Para hindi naiipon, hindi napupuno ang inyong pantog. Kung meron kayong mga maintenance medication, you review your medications. Minsan meron kayong iniinom na mga pampaihi, katulad ng sampung, furosemide, thiazide, yung mga gamot nyo para sa ibang sakit 
minsan may kasama po itong pampaihi. Kaya it is possible na yun ang dahilan kung bakit kayo ihi ng ihi. Pwede rin treat constipation. Kasi pag kayo ay nagkuktitib or constipated, naaapektuhan din ang pag-ihi nyo. Kaya nagkakaproblema rin kayo sa pag-ihi o sa pagdaloy ng ihi. So minsan magkasabay silang dalawa. Pareho kayong may problema sa pagdumi, constipation, and nagkakaroon kayong problema sa pag-ihi. Ano ang mga bawal? Kadalasan tinatanong sa akin to ng pasyente, Doktor, ano ho ba ang bawal? Kung ang problema ay sa pag-ihi lang or lower urinary tract problems, isa lang ko ang kadalasan kong sinasabing bawal. Ang pagkain ng maaanghang. Kasi ang labasan ng ihi natin, lalo na ang prostate, katulad yan ng almoranas. Pag mahilig kayo sa maanghang, namamaga ang inyong almoranas. Ganon din po nang mamaga yung iyong prostate ang labasan ng inyong pantog. So, mangyayari, magkakaproblema kayo sa pag-ihi, yung tinatawag natin lower urinary tract symptoms. So, pag meron po kayong ganyan, iwasan nyo ang maaangkang. Ngayon po, nagawa nyo na yung lifestyle modification, dietary restrictions, may iwas sa pagkain maaangkang, but meron pa rin problema sa lower urinary tract symptoms. Nowadays, ang una natin kinukonsulta si Google. Walang masama kumonsulta kay Google, but problema, pag mali ang intindi nyo, lalo kayong napapamali or lalo kayong nagkakaproblema. So, wag na wag kayong masyadong didependa kay Google. Pag hindi ka gumaling, tatlong linggo na o isang linggo na lumapit ka na sa isang doktor. That is the time to initiate medical or drug therapy or the treatment. Ngayon, as a doctor or as a urologist, meron kaming pamantayan kung kailan magsisimula ng medical management. Like number one, if you have a moderate symptoms of IPSS. Ito po yung mga ini-scoran namin kung gaano ang mga nararamdamang problema ng isang pasyente. It is developed by the American Neurological Association uh, International Prostate Symptom Score. Pag ang score mo is 8 and above, ibig sabihin kailangan ka na uminom ng gamot. Number two, pag kayo or ang pasyente ay naiistorbo pa rin, napupuyat, nangangayayat, kakagising sa gabi dahil ihi ng ihi. That is also the time to start medical management. Pag ang patient ay nagkakaroon na ng komplikasyon like UTI, infection, nagkakaroon ng bato, nasisira na ang kidney function, by all means, lumapit na kayo sa doktor para mabigyan ng gamot. Lalo na pag ang ihi nyo ay meron ng dugo o meron ng nana, lumapit na po kayo sa doktor para mabigyan na kayo ng karampatang gamot. Para naman sa prostate problem, pag ang prostate ay medyo malaki na, mga 30 to 40 grams, that is the time with, syempre, IPSS score of more than 8 and possibly the PSA or the prostate-specific antigen is normal, big sabihin wala namang ibang problema, hindi siya cancerous, that is the time to start medication. Ang mga gamot na ginagamit natin para sa lower urinary tract symptoms, number one are the alpha blockers. Kauna-unahan si terasusin, tapos merong alfususin, doxasusin, tamsolusin, Marami ho niyan sa market, almost 30 or 40 years na sa ginagamit na ho ng mga doktor yan. So relatively safe siya. Kahit inumin natin tuloy-tuloy for 4 to 5 years, okay lang siya. The next is 
meron mga gamot na pampaliit o pampashrink ng prostate, which is the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Yung po yung finasteride and dutasteride. Kagandahan dito, talagang lumilit ang prostate, but ang epekto niyan usually yung clinically after 3 months natin makikita. So, importante po na pag kayo gumamit ng mga gamot na to, tuloy-tuloy nyo at least 3 months para makikita nyo yung significant decrease ng size ng prostate. With regards to problems in lower urinary tract symptoms, hindi ho yan nakabase sa size ng prostate, but nakabase po kung ano ang nararamdaman ng pasyente. Minsan po, merong pasyenteng malaki ang prostate, pero maganda ang ihi. So, hindi binibigyan ng gamot. Ganda ang ihi, normal ang PSA, hindi po kailangan bigyan ng gamot. Meron naman mga pasyenteng maliit ang prostate, pero barado, hindi makalabas ang ihi, or ihi ng ihi sa gabi, that is the time na kailangan kang simulan ng pagbigay ng gamot. Lalo na yung mga alpha blockers. After giving alpha blockers or 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, meron naman kombinasyon ng dalawa. Pampaluwag sa pag-ihi, pampaliit ng prostate. Pwede rin ang gawin to. Meron din the food supplements or mga halamang gamot na ginagamit para sa prostate. Number one, aronia berries. Pwede rin yung sopalmeto, pumpkin seeds, the rice, the trembling poplar. Ginagamit para gumanda ang ihi, lumuwag ang pag-ihi, hindi magkaroon ng malaking prostate. Another form of drug therapy or medications for the problems in lower urinary tract symptoms are the anti-muscarinics. Yun, ito naman po yung masyadong contract ng contract ang bladder. Maya at maya umiihi din. It is one form of lower urinary tract symptoms problem which ang binibigay ng gamot yung pamparelax ng pantog. One example are the solifenacins. Pwede rin nakita nila na yung mga gamot para sa erection like phosphodiesterase PDE5 inhibitors, tadalafil, sildenafils, can also be used for lower urinary tract symptoms or BPH. Now, pag lahat ginawa mo na, nag-behavioral modification ka na, marami ka ng kinaing halamang gamot, marami ka ng ininom na medications, pero nandyan pa rin yung symptoms, ihi ka pa rin ang ihi, nahirapan ka pa rin umihi, and lumalabas na ang complications like obstruction, paulit-ulit na infection, persistent hematuria or dumudugo ang ihe, sumasakit na ang pag-ihe, that would be the time na kailangan na talaga mag-opera. Sa advancement ngayon, hindi na ho lahat ay hinihiwa. Meron ng mga gamit na ipapasok lang sa daanan ng ihe and Pwede ho siyang i-laser, pwede siyang kayurin, pwede siyang ultrasound. Maraming paraan, non-invasive surgery. Kailangan lang po lumapit kayo sa isang urologist para magawa ng paraan to. Now, after discussing the treatment for urinary problems, pag-usapan naman po natin sa mga noon-noong panahon, ano ba ang pinagagamitan nila ng ihe. During the medieval period, ginagamit siya as a detergent. Urine has a high ammonia content. And ammonia is a good stain remover. So, ginagamit siya sa panglaba. Tinutuyo ang ihi at yung powder nun ginagawing parang sabong panglaba. Isa pang gamit, yung powder na pinagtuyuan ng ihi, ginagawa nilang pampaputi ng ngipin. Pinupunas nila sa kanilang ngipin para magkaroon sila ng magandang smile. Because urine has a ammonia content. Ganun pa rin. It is a good stain remover. Pati yung kanilang ngipin ay nawawala yung mga stain. Pagkatapos ng puting ngipin, pampakinis naman ng mukha. So, ginagamit nila ang ihe panghugas ng mukha. Because 
Since urine have high ammonia content, it cleanses the face and the pores ng ating mukha. Kaya nagiging kutis porcelana sila. Nung araw, meron din mga paniniwala na ang urine is antibacterial, antiviral, and ginagamit sa paglinis ng sugat, pampahilom ng sugat. So, ang ginagawa nila, yung kanilang ihi sa mo umaga, yun ang kanilang iniinom para sila ay maging malusog. And, eto inabutan ko to. Yung sa mga plantito at sa kaplantita. Ginagawa ng nanay ko noon, kinokolek niya ang ihi sa arenola sa umaga, dadagdagan ng tubig, at yun ang pinapangdilig sa halaman. Because urine have a high nitrogen and phosphorus content. Maganda daw itong fertilizer para sa halaman at ito ay maganda at namumulaklak ang mga halaman. Yun po ang gamit ng ihi. Marami tayong ginawang pagsusuri sa ihi. That is the story of flu and pee. Maraming salamat po. Please like my Facebook page, Dr. Wilfredo Tagle. Please share it to your friends kung gusto mong malaman din nila kung ano ang mga gamit ng ihi, papano ang nagsimula ang arinola, and kung saan pumupunta ang ihi natin nung araw. So hanggang dito na lang po. Please share my Facebook page, share the information, and thank you very much.